Well, all the things that uh, happened in the beginning of the game is what we feel like was going to hurt us, and that's getting off to a slow start. Uh, I thought we had some good opportunities at the beginning of the game. It was getting easy basket, uh, but we didn't finish those plays. You know, and uh, we we got to the championship finals simply because we were a good free throw shooting team, well, a great free throw shooting team. And look at how we shot them today. Uh, we go to the line 30 times. That's all you can ask for. You can stay close just by making free throw. And uh, if you look at the game, both teams, neither team really shot the ball that great. Jackson State just made their free throws, and I thought that was a different in the game. They were finishing plays, and I, I kind of know why. I mean, I just felt like the kids' mind was was there, but the body won't allow them to do some of the things that they wanted to do. But uh, I, I do think the better team won, to be honest with you. I think the better team won. I think the team that's going to give us the opportunity to represent our conference better won. But I, I'm, I'm still proud of my, my, my team. I thought our kids did a good job just to get here. I just wish we could have played better. We would have had the legs to be able to, to, to give Jackson State a, a better game. I thought we could have gave them a better game if we had had our legs. And we just weren't able to do it. First question goes to Kyle Mosley. Hey, Coach, congratulations still on the year. And what was the message that you had for the young ladies after the game? I just, I just told them, man, I'm, I'm proud of them. I want them to keep their heads up. When, I, when they walk out of this locker room, I want you to, I know you're disappointed, but I want you to have your heads up. Uh, hold your heads up high and let people know that, you know, you'll be back. Because I really feel like we're going to be back next year. We got our core coming back. Uh, we just need to add a few more pieces to what's going on. Like at the point guard position, we need to get a little taller at the two guard position. Uh, we need to add at least two more posts. And we can, we can sign about four or five kids that can come in with this group. Uh, we're going to be back here. We, we're going to be back here. We feel like we, we got a chance to win a conference championship next year. And uh, we just feel good about where we are with this program. And I just want our kids to understand that. You know, sometimes you have to go through something to get to where you're trying to go. And uh, th this was great for us to just to have the opportunity to, to feel being in the championship game. Can't nobody say we hadn't been here before. We, we've been here now. So next year, hopefully we can get, get back here. I know because it's tough to get back here, but I hope we can get back here. I think we'll be good enough to. What have you guys learned from this experience? Well, to, to try to get a better seed for one thing, I think the bracket is set up for the number two and number one seed to, to win it simply because they get that day off. And uh, it's, I think that day off is important because playing three games back to back, uh, it, that's difficult. That's difficult. You know, I, I don't think no team is in the condition of really to, cause unless you have depth. You can get away with it if you have depth. We did not have the depth that we needed to have to be able to play three games back to back and be uh, physically ready to, to, to compete. That, I think that was the biggest issue. We just weren't physically ready. We didn't have the depth to be able to get us through those moments when we wasn't uh, able to get basket. Because really, no, neither one of the teams shot the ball that great today. Jackson State just shot free throws better. And that's what pulled, pulled the way with the lead. I just feel like uh, we, we, we've got to get a better seed next year. And I, and I say we, we can get like a 2 or one seed. Those, those are the best seeds. So that's what, that's, that'll be our fight next year to, to get a better seed. Congratulations. Good luck next year. Thank you very much. Next question goes to Jake Key. Coach, I'm sorry for your loss. Um, and, and then how much did their athleticism and their length bother you, especially Jackson? And then also um, about about them being able to make some point shot games. I didn't hear your, your last part of your question. The, 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 their ability to make three point shots on you. Oh, well, you know, I'm going to tell you the biggest issue that we have with Jackson. It ain't but one person, and that's Angel. She's the person that makes it so difficult to get easy baskets. You know, we used to get an easy basket when we were struggling on the offensive end. We can deal with we can deal with Boulder, Avent, and Crump. We can deal with them. We always have. We we always been solid against them. But anytime they have a person in there where you can't get easy basket, they always send you towards Angel. And Angel, she's a great defensive player. That's why she's defensive player of the year. She's gonna make you alter your shot. You know, she's going to block it or make you alter that shot. And I think she's the key to them being as good as they are. She's the reason why all their uh, uh, three-point shooters can get those shots because she's, uh, she's around that basket all the time. You're concerned about her. Not saying that Avid, Clump, and uh, Bowler are not good players because they are. But if Angel wasn't in the game, the games would be, their games would be a lot closer because other teams would be able to score against them. You know, even when they're scoring, other teams would be able to score more. We, it's a lot of things we couldn't do simply because she was in the game. You know, we like to run a lot of stuff for our guards, posting our guards up, but it's hard to pass the ball over Angel. 
And, you know, a lot, we like to do it a lot from our five. So that means she's got to pass the ball over her, and she makes it difficult to do that. You know, and Jackson, they do a good job of scouting us. They give us what they feel like is our weakness. We like to run a lot of backdoor stuff, so they make us shoot the ball from the outside. And we are not as consistent as we need to be with making open shots. But Angel is different in the game. She's just a different all the way around. She's the reason why Jackson is as good as they are. You can look at all the scores you scores they got on their team if you want to, but take Angel out of that out of that out of that uh, picture and out near a different team. It's simple. Coach, in the follow-up, can you tell me your thoughts about Tamika Reed as a coach? I mean, three times black coach of the year. I mean, you know, you'd figure that you guys would figure out as coaches, but Pink Jones is trying to stop her and slow her down. You talking about Tamika? To yes, sir. Coach Reed, well, yes, we, sir. Need, we need to slow the players that Tamika uh, recruit down. Tamika ain't hard to slow down. It's the players that she's recruited. That's the hard part to slow down. But she's a great coach. I, mean, I, I look at coaches. Uh, there are a lot of great coaches who are not winning games, but you, they are great coaches. Simply because you just watch what coaches do. That's what, to me, that's what tells whether you're good at coaching or not. A lot, a lot of teams got more talent than other teams got, so they don't really have to coach. I know a lot of coaches that's winning that really can't coach. They just got talent. They're good recruiters. But I don't think Tamika's one of those. I think she's solid. She's solid on both sides of the ball when it comes to defense, when it comes to offense. She just know, she knows what she's doing. She knows how to put you to your weakness, and she knows how to uh, put you against her strengths. And I think that's what she's good at. And, and you get some talent along with that, you get outside shooting, you get a defender like Angel, I mean, they're going to be hard to compete with. That's, that's why uh, Jackson's been so good over the years, simply because they got great coaching. I think her staff is good, you know, because most of the time your assistant coaches are the one that, that's scouting the team. I mean, they scout us to a T. You know what I mean? They know what our weaknesses are because they know they're going to have to give up something when they play us. You're either going to give us the back door or you're going to give us the elbow shot. Most of the time they give us the elbow shot. And that's the shot we have to make on a consistent basis. And, uh, that's coaching to me. And, you know, she knows she knows what she's doing. She knows she knows our weakness. She knows how to get the ball in those places where we're going to be weak at when it comes to how we defend. And you know, they they like to attack Destiny the Brown when they play us because they want to get in early foul trouble. What happened? First quarter, she got two fouls. She's on the bench. That's coaching to me. Understanding the game, and she's one of the best at it. She's proven that over the over the time. I like competing against those kind of coaches, though. But we know we have to get better talent too. We got to get deeper uh, with our talent level. You know, right now we're just not deep enough to be able to compete with, with uh, what they are doing and the things that they are doing. But we know why we're not. We know why we're not getting some of the players there. We just got to. We know the problem. We just got to solve it. Coach, you mentioned that you know you know We will now go to the in-person portion of this press conference. We'll open it up for questions for Coach. Coach, first of all, talk about you know your season. The last three out of four games you won coming into the tournament, you would be Southern, able to beat Grambling. Talk a little bit about you know the mindset over the last six or seven games of the season. Well, it's been it's been awesome to be honest with you uh, to have our kids uh, believing, believing they can win, and you know doing the things uh, uh, they need to do to win. Andrew? It makes practice easier. It makes it make your approach to game easier because now your kids are buying in. You know, not, not I don't feel like they weren't buying in earlier, but. It helps when you start to make shots. It helps when you start to make free throws. All that stuff is part of the buy-in part because, you know, you can say you, you know, bought in and when you can't, you can't make that big shot you need to make, a lot of times it makes it difficult for kids to buy into what you're doing. But I, I say our last 10 ball games, well, even, even the ones we lost, I thought our kids had bought into what we was doing. I thought they was believed in what we was doing. And uh, you can tell by the way they, they played. I mean, I thought they was executed. And we always been a good team that, that had a good half court game. You know, we, we kept people in the half court. That's why our score stayed so low, because we, we turned it into a half court game. And that's what made us difficult to play against. A lot of those high power offensive teams that played against us, the scores always were low, because we controlled the tempo of the game. But it's all about kids buying in and believing. You know, I don't care what people say. You have to have some kind of talent if you're going to win in this league. You know, and your, your talent need to be deep. And, and I think that's the, that's the issue with now with the Sweat Conference. The Sweat Conference are getting a lot of Power 5 kids in there. Ain't no, ain't no Power 5 kids on our team. And nobody on our team has come, came from a Power 5 school. They're all in homegrown kids, kids that we recruited out of junior college or we got, or we got out of high school. We got we to gotta start being able to steal some of those Power 5 kids, too, if they're going to get on the port and our, and our competition is going to get them. Because the difference in the game was, you look at Jackson State, they missed the power five kids. 
that's, that's why they're where they are today. They, they're able to get those type of kids. And we have to start being able to get those type of kids too. Coach, also, um, one of the biggest things that we saw, and you talked about it earlier on the virtual side, you mentioned that you know those are power five kids, but do you also think the fact that you got to go back to back to back is one of the biggest things to add that as well? Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Playing three games in a row, and that, I think that I think it really was a different in the game when it comes to us being able to keep the game close. You know, I mean, I think our kids' mindset was coming in like, because this is the most I ever seen them locked in and ready to do stuff. You know, they, they, they're on me about coaching. Normally when I take them to the mall, they want to walk around the mall. They're in the mall, they're like, coach, let's eat, let's go to the gym. They didn't want, they all sit at their table and they sit as a group. I said, okay, they locked in. So their mindset was right. It's just the legs wasn't ready for it. Because as soon as the game started, I could tell. You know, by the way, we got up and down the floor. They wanted to do it. They just couldn't do it. You know, so that means a lot. And I, that's why I talked about seeding. You know, you need, you need to be a high seed if you want to have the chance to do it. Not saying that a six seed can't do it. Because a six seed can do it. But you, I think you need more depth than what we had to do it with. Uh, we, our second three point guard is not here. She was dealing with uh, uh, grandma being sick. She, she didn't even, wasn't even here. So that hurt us a lot. Uh, McCarthy had to play almost the whole game. So you have to have depth if you're going to be in, you're going to have those kind. You're going to be a lower seed and you have to play three games back to back. You need depth to win it. It's simple. Final question. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate, right, appreciate it. it. All right, Um, just this year, um, as we talked uh, in the last regular season game, the team really bought in and they got on the roll. You felt like they had a chance uh, this week to get to this championship game. What did it mean for this group and, and this group of, of, of women to kind of overcome everything and just get to this game? I think it meant a lot for our program simply because we have so many kids returning. I say returning. I don't, I don't know who's going to get on the transport portal when we have our final meeting, and that's important, too, because I, I, I do know people are looking at some of the kids that we got and, you know, some of the kids that got, well, we got. We think we got a good core coming back, but I don't really know the answer to that until I have my team meeting, and some of my kids might say, Coach, I'm getting on the transport portal. Hopefully that won't be the case, but I think the, the opportunity to, to come and play in a championship game with a great core coming back, and we add a few uh, pieces to with this core, I think we got an opportunity to come back not as a six seed, I'm talking about as one seed or two seed. And, that, and, and uh, being able to experience this, that's going to help us for next year. You know, because this is Destiny Brown, first year actually playing in the conference tournament. Uh, Tangina Wright played, her, played her, her freshman year in the tournament. But we only had a few people that really played in it. Our point guard, McCarthy, played in it. And, and uh, Tangina Wright are the only two people that on this team that has that experienced playing in the tournament. So I think this is going to help us in the long run, like next year. Coach, what are you proudest of? Say it again. Just what are you proudest of looking back, having made it all the way to the final game? To know to know where we where we came from, and, no, and, no, and a lot of guys don't know about the injury bug that we really had. You know, I think that's that's my proudest moment is knowing that uh, we had so many kids hurt, and like that's Destiny Brown is, is actually playing with a, a, a high ankle sprain right now. Uh, 21, Brio Ford is, is, is playing with a sprained ACL. Ford is playing with a sprained ACL. Number four spent spent most of her time our last four games. Flying back and forth from California to get get a uh, fluid drain off her knee, just to be able to get here after all that stuff, and we lost about four of our top kids that we thought was going to be here for the year, and then to get this group, and then to be able to turn around and get hot like we did, and to get to the final, because I knew we was good enough. I just didn't know we were going to be able to buy in enough or had a depth to be able to get to. Work. I didn't. I knew we would, had the talent to get to the tournament, but I didn't know we was going to be able to have the mindset or the or the Injury bug was going to just keep, a, keep us out of it because um, we had some serious injury. And when you have injury, things start going bad, then you start having locker room problems. Because losing, winning takes care of a lot of stuff. When you're losing, I mean, it, it causes a lot of stuff too. It's a lot of things you, you look over if you was winning. But when you're losing and you, and you, and you see these things happening, people start to, uh, you start to hear all that chatter. And we had a lot of that going on. But we still was able to win a few games in that process. And then as we started to win some of these games, our confidence level got up. And then we started to get a little bit, you know, we got a little healthier too as we got closer to the tournament. So I thought that was huge for us. But just to 
know that these kids are playing hurt, and I won't say hurt, I say injured, you know, because they were injured. You know, there's a difference. Everybody play hurt, but we had kids playing injured. You know, that means you playing with something you probably shouldn't be playing with. But to see them play the way they played, uh, I'm extremely proud of them. Coach, you talk about injuries. Do you have any players that will be having a postseason surgery at all? That's that's a good question. I, probably so. I think Ford is probably going to have postseason surgery. I think uh, 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 Watson is probably going to have postseason surgery. At least them two. And, I, and maybe uh, maybe one of the kids that was put out for the year, like Molly Clayton, who was one of our better shooters, didn't play any this year, she's probably going to have surgery at the end of the year.